Kraft Mac and Cheese is the first meal millions of Americans cook on their own. Burn the noodles? Start over! This blue box has been the training wheels of adulthood for nearly 90 years. Americans buy over 1 million boxes every day, but no home cook has ever matched that factory taste. How does Kraft turn real cheese into powder that dissolves in seconds, stays stable for months, and somehow tastes more cheesy than the cheese it came from? The answer starts with something most people never consider. Cheese, at its core, is a failure of chemistry. Milk fat and water naturally want to separate. When cheesemakers curdle milk, they force proteins to trap fat droplets in a fragile matrix held together by calcium bridges. Heat that cheese too fast, and the bridges collapse. Fat pools on top. Water leaks out. You get the greasy, broken mess every home cook has experienced at least once. This is why homemade mac and cheese fails. The cheddar in your fridge was designed to age on a shelf, hold its shape, and slice cleanly, not melt into smooth sauce. The same calcium bridges that keep it firm make it clump when heated. Stir faster, add more milk, nothing helps. Factory Mac doesn't have this problem. The reason reveals one of food manufacturing's cleverest chemical tricks. In 1916, James Kraft patented processed cheese. The idea was simple, but revolutionary. Break the calcium bridges holding natural cheese together, then rebuild them in a controlled way. The key ingredient? Sodium phosphate. Add it to melted cheddar, and sodium ions swap places with calcium in the protein structure. Calcium gets pulled away from the casein proteins that form cheese's framework. Without calcium locking them in place, those proteins unfold and move freely. Here's the clever part. Those freed proteins become emulsifiers. They wrap around fat droplets and water molecules, keeping them mixed instead of separated. The cheese becomes a stable emulsion that won't break no matter how you heat it. This is why Velveeta melts like silk while sharp cheddar turns grainy. But Kraft had a bigger problem. Processed cheese still needed refrigeration. To make a product that could sit in a pantry for months, they had to remove the water entirely. The solution is a 50-foot tower called a spray dryer. Liquid cheese gets pumped to the top and forced through nozzles at high pressure, atomizing into fine mist. Hot air blasts upward at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. In under 30 seconds, droplets lose nearly all moisture. What falls to the bottom is cheese powder. But this powder isn't just dried cheese. During spray drying, volatile flavor compounds evaporate with the water. The cheese loses its sharpness, its tang, its complexity. This is why Kraft blends aged cheeses with enzyme-modified flavors to rebuild what the drying process strips away. So if spray drying removes flavor and sodium phosphate breaks structure, why does Kraft taste more intensely cheesy than fresh cheddar melted at home? The answer is hiding in the pasta water. When you boil Kraft noodles, starch leaches into the water. That cloudy liquid isn't waste. It's the secret weapon. Starch molecules are long chains that physically trap fat droplets, preventing them from pooling. When you drain the pasta and add butter, milk, and powder, residual starch creates a coating around every fat globule. This is why the directions say drain, but don't rinse. Rinsing washes away starch. Without it, sauce breaks. The instructions aren't just convenient, they're chemically precise. Powder alone doesn't explain the color. Natural cheddar ranges from pale ivory to light orange. Kraft's signature nuclear orange comes from something else entirely. Until 2016, that color came from synthetic dyes, yellow 5 and yellow 6. When consumer pressure forced a reformulation, Kraft spent three years developing a replacement 
using paprika, turmeric, and annatto, natural pigments that hit the exact same orange wavelength. What surprises everyone? Most consumers didn't notice the switch. Kraft ran the world's largest blind taste test. 50 million boxes sold before they announced the change. Same color, same taste, zero artificial dyes. This reveals something about processed food we rarely acknowledge. What we perceive as artificial is often about formulation, not ingredients. The pasta is equally engineered. Kraft's signature noodle isn't traditional elbow macaroni. It's thinner, straighter, designed specifically for this product. Shape matters more than you'd think. Thinner walls mean seven minutes cooking time instead of 12. The slight curve creates surface area without deep pockets that trap powder unevenly. The hollow center allows sauce to coat both inside and outside, maximizing cheese contact per bite. Character shapes like SpongeBob cost more per ounce, but have devoted fans who swear they taste better. They're not wrong. Thicker shapes release more starch during cooking, creating creamier sauce. Ridges and grooves hold more powder. Same formulation, different geometry, different eating experience. Every box represents a supply chain spanning continents. Midwest wheat gets milled into semolina. Dairy milk becomes cheese, then powder, blended with whey and buttermilk solids. The result is shelf-stable for 10 months without refrigeration. This was revolutionary during the Great Depression. Kraft sold boxes for 19 cents with the promise, a meal for four in nine minutes. During World War II rationing, two boxes cost one ration stamp. 50 million boxes sold in 1943 alone. The blue box has survived every food trend that should have killed it. Organic movements, low-carb diets, clean label demands, none made a dent. Kraft sells 7 million boxes globally every single week. Next time you tear open that familiar blue box, you're witnessing nearly a century of food chemistry perfected into seven minutes of boiling water. The sodium phosphate keeping your sauce smooth. The spray dried powder engineered for maximum flavor impact. The pasta geometry calculated for optimal cheese distribution. This isn't just convenience food. It's applied science you can eat with a spoon. So which version's sitting in your pantry right now? Original or shapes?